So I want to thank you again, of course, for uh, your time today. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the My Vision of Life website, which we built specifically for clients. And what I want to do at the beginning is just do a review of the mechanics. The mechanics are fairly uh, straightforward, uh, you know, nothing overly challenging about it. So um, what I'm going to do actually to start is just remind you about the uh, retirement planning questionnaire. So this is the simplest thing you can do with clients. Uh, remember, of course, that we can brand these for you, put in a logo, business card, make sure that your corporate colors are entered. You can either send this out to a client if you think that the client will complete the uh, form. You could pre-complete part of it, you know, their name, date of birth, things like that. Save the PDF questionnaire in the client's name. You don't want to be saving their a, a specific client's data in your generic questionnaire that you want to send everybody. So you would save it in the client's name, send it out to them, and then they can complete the rest. Or because nobody likes to complete questionnaires, I talk about, you know, just getting on a webinar. Everybody's quite used to them now and going through and completing it with the client. Ultimately, what happens, of course, is that you click the submit button or the client clicks the submit button. Even if you're doing this with clients, you still need to click submit. Uh, passwords can be entered. I frankly don't think they're necessary uh, because the kind of data file we're creating here is very specific to the form. Nobody can intercept a data file and open it. The data file can only be opened into the form that created it. So if anybody did intercept the client data, <clears throat> they would need one of our questionnaires to open it. So I really don't think a password is necessary. But in any event, what ends up happening is the client enters your email address, or even if you're doing this with the client, you still enter your email address. You click OK, an email is created, addressed to you, and a data file is attached to it. And the kind of data file is an Adobe file. It's called an FDF file. And that data file has not only the client data, but it also has an address system that instructs VisionWorks exactly what to do with the data. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run VisionWorks and I'm going to, uh, you know, load that client file. So I want to take this as from the point of view of just setting up the most basic of plans as easily as we possibly can. So I'm going to click the add button. I want to start a new plan. Click import from questionnaire. We're going to start a retirement plan. As you know, my recommendation is that you, um, that you, uh, uh, put in the client's name. I like to use last name first because I could have a lot of Bills or Sue. So, you know, Smith, Bill, Sue. Um, and then I always recommend you put in a little code, uh, a little code like RP to remind you that this is a retirement plan, REP that it's a retirement and estate plan or FP that it's a financial plan. They have different functionality and sometimes people have opened plans expecting to see the full financial plan functionality. Uh, and it's not there because all they did previously was create a simple retirement plan. So recommend the client name. And then when we click OK, you can then go and find that FDF client data file that was extracted from the questionnaire, open it up. Again, if the client used a password, you have to enter the password in order to decrypt the data. But we, we open everything up, the whole plan is set up and we're ready to go. So this is the easiest way to get clients engaged in the process. The issue, of course, is you know, your time is at a premium. So we've got this plan set up. We've got the financials, TFSAs, RSPs, all of that got imported from the hey. questionnaire. Yes? Question? Hello. 
Hello. Oh, sorry, Mike. Okay. Uh, but what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to get clients more involved in creating a vision of life. And if your time is at a premium and you can't be sitting down and you know going through all of this with the client, then what you're able to do, and this is the whole point of my vision of life, is you're able to start off with something very basic, go to the import export page, click export to my vision of life. And then what you're going to do for a client is click the add button, put in their first name, last name. This is being picked up, of course, from the underlying uh, file that we're in. Enter their email address, and then you can just give them a very temporary password. They can go in ultimately and change that. So I've already done that. I've got Bill Smith set up uh, with his email address and password. So once I've got that done, then I just click export. And what's going to happen is this basic file is going to be exported uh, to the My Vision of Life website. And then we're able to send clients uh, the address give them their login credentials, and then they can go and log in. So I'm going to go now um, to the My Vision of Life website. And hopefully I logged out the last time I was in. Um, yes, I did. So you send clients to the My Vision of Life website, they click the login button, enter their email address and password, which of course I've done previously, and then click the login button. And what you'll see is that everything is ready to go. So if I jump past this introduction and go to the about page, you can see that I've already imported Bill and Sue. You know, that was all exported from VisionWorks. Clients can go in. If you haven't done this, they could log in on their own but then they'd have to click the add button and go through the routine of, you know, adding parties to the plan. Now, we've made this as simple as possible by developing a series of questions that they respond to. So the questions make it much easier for people to complete the about page. But nevertheless, doing something like complete, completing the about page is still, you know, very boring for people. So my recommendation is that as a minimum, you set that up and then export the file to uh, the My Vision of Life site so that clients can you know, get past that. If they wish, they can do their values, uh, which is very simple, of course, just dragging the slide bars. But you see here some instructions that give clients a, a bit of background about you know, why do the values. But the main thing really is to go to the vision page and give clients then the opportunity to amplify on their vision of life. Now, you'll notice down here that there's a help button and it plays a short video that explains to them exactly how to do things. So in our example, uh, we've exported that uh, very basic retirement plan. All we have is the house, the vacation home. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, their vehicles in here, their general expenses and so on. So they could start adding vacations and doing whatever else they want to do. So as an example, I'm just going to go back to the home. Uh, by the way, the website does work much more crisply when clients are using it on their own. When we're using Zoom, uh, because we're of the Zoom uh, resources that are required, that slows down the website. So we go back to the home, clients look over the different things they may want to have and do, click the renovation button, we want to renovate the kitchen, go in, put in the entry, and then they can quantify it again, the video shows them how to do this, click the show table button, select the year, uh, let's say we want to do this next year, and let's say we want to do this for $100,000. Now, what the client is then able to do uh, as they create their vision, the initial financial forecast that you see on the left has been exported from the retirement plan we did. So when they go in and create entries, what the client's able to do is click the refresh button and that will refresh the financial forecast. 
and they'll get an opportunity to see the before and after uh, impact of any changes that they make. So you can see here, we could roll over virtually any year and see the, the uh, short and long-term implications on the financial forecast. What the client is then able to do is, you know, continue on, uh, amplify in the different areas of life about the things that they want to have and do. When they make changes, you will receive an email saying that the Smiths have actually logged on to the My Vision of Life website. So that gives you the opportunity sometime later to go back to the Smiths file, open it up, click the import button, from my vision of life, uh, the client list will then have your different clients who uh, are on the site. I just have Bill Smith. So you'll be able to select a client and rather than importing what changes they may have made into the current solution, which in this case is the initial assessment, you can create a new uh, solution automatically. So I'm going to just call this one um, you know, client changes. And when I click the import button, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a message that tells me exactly what it is that the client did. Uh, I'll click close and then everything is imported. And now when I go to the home, I can go and see there's the kitchen renovation, $100,000, 2022. So, the idea is if we have a limited amount of time, what we wanna do is give the client the opportunity to amplify on their wants in life. Why are we doing this? Well, the client's areas of expertise are their values and the things they wanna have and do in life. Our area of expertise is all of the financial planning tactics that we can employ to help get them from where they are to where they want to be. So that's sort of the why of doing it, you know, in a uh, very surface point of view. But I'd also suggest to you that the why of doing this and getting the client more engaged in talking about the specific things they want to have and do is uh, really based on three main things. The first is that a vision of life that's based on specific wants is much more motivating to clients than something which is just general expenses. I wanna retire with $60,000 of income or $100,000 or whatever it may be. Literally, when a plan is based on that, the client is thinking in terms of, let's say $100,000. In other words, one zero zero comma zero zero zero. There is absolutely no emotional engagement in a plan that distills everything down to a number. What we want to do is we want to help clients build a vision of life of specific wants. So the example that I always like to use is winter vacations. When I say winter vacations, for an instant, you have a mental image that flashes through your brain as to what that might mean to you, whether it's going to Hawaii, going to Cuba, going skiing, whatever it might be, you actually have a mental image of what that is. And with that mental image, there's an emotion. The area of the brain that constructs the mental images is tightly linked to the area of the brain responsible for our emotions. So when you think of something that you wanna do, child's wedding, you'll have an emotional response. And what's really interesting is that the brain can't tell time. So if I say a child's wedding and you're talking about a child who's five years old, you'll have a mental image of the wedding and you'll experience an emotional response to the same degree as a client who's 25 years old and that wedding may be you know, uh, much sooner. So by talking in terms of specific images, we're engaging the clients emotionally in the plan. And my book, 
chapter five is devoted to all of that. So, you know, I suggest maybe you might, might want to go back and review that as far as the reasons we really want to get people thinking in terms of their specific wants in life. The second reason that I think this is so important is that people do, it, what's happening in our industry today is planning is being distilled down to retirement planning. If it serves the financial institutions, you know, saving, selling products, earning a return on it and so on. But when people sit around the dinner table, I doubt very much that they sit around and say, do you think we have the right asset allocation in our portfolios in order to be able to have the 60 or $100,000 of income that we talked about in retirement? I just don't think that happens. I think people sit around the dinner table and they talk about the kitchen renovation, whether they'll do it or not, how much can they afford to spend on it and so on. So I call that the dinner table conversation. There was a great term coined by Dan Richards and the term he used was the client 99. What do clients think about 99% of the time? And it's the things that represent their wants in life that they're trying to make decisions about. Well, to the degree that we help flesh out these pictures of life, the things they want to have and do, then obviously we can add them to the plan, check the financial forecast, see the long-term implications and help clients make the most informed decisions possible. So rather than one day, someday, you know, retirement that we're planning for by helping clients make informed current decisions were making the planning process much more relevant uh, in their lives. And then related to all of that is a very simple fact that there is no such thing as the plan. And that sometimes sounds strange coming from me where, you know, most of my life has dev been devoted to planning software. But the reality of life is that for all of us, uh, we're subject to change. And that may be change in our wants. It may be change because of changes in the world around us. Certainly the last year has demonstrated that. So ultimately there is no the plan. What there is are our wants at this point in time and our financial circumstances in helping clients get on track at this moment in time to be able to achieve those wants. But we know for certain that as time passes, you know, wants will change. So again, coming back to that whole point about the client 99, ultimately the true purpose of planning is not to create the plan that we're going to live our life by, but rather create a decision-making model so that as we face new choices in life, uh, we can help clients by creating what if scenarios, adding what they're thinking of doing, seeing what the financial implications are, and again, you know, making the most informed decisions possible. So the point of planning ultimately really is to help clients master change. And if we can show clients that that's really what we're able to help them with, that's how we can position ourselves in their minds is their irreplaceable financial guide. But it comes down to, in my opinion, making plans much more relevant and plans that are just about, I want $100,000 of income in retirement one day, someday, just don't engage people, uh, you know, at any great depth. You know, it's thank you very much. I've had the plan done. They're often called actually one and done plans. Had the plan done, walk out of the office and that's it. And I never think about it rather than making it a, an instrument that, you know, is very central to helping them really master change in their lives. So those are the things that I wanted to cover today. And um, what I'd like to do is just throw it open to questions. So if anybody has any questions, please unmute yourselves and then um, and then uh, ask whatever's on your mind. Michael. The only comment I, I can make is that I don't think very many advisors are actually using this. And we put in a, a lot of work. I very much believe in, you know, the whole 
interactive, get clients engaged in their vision. Um, but I do know that a few clients who uh, have introduced their, a few of our clients that have introduced their clients to the site has said, this is exactly what people wanted. They, they you know, said to the advisor, this is fantastic. It's what I've always wanted to be able to do, play with my vision. That's the dinner table conversation. That's the client 99. That's what people think about. They don't think about the stuff we, you know, but what Richard says um, is, you know, the client 99 is what the client thinks about 99% of the time. And what we do in our business is we try and minimize that. How much income do you want in retirement? Great. Now let's start talking about portfolio allocations. We try and bring the, we minimize the time we spend on the client's conversation, what they think about and we maximize the amount of time we spend on the things we think about. And so Richard's whole point was, you know, the doorway to the client is 99 times bigger if what you do first is, you know, uh, spend time on the things that they think about. And that's exactly what this is. So when people say, this is what I've always wanted to do, it's because They've never had the opportunity to do it. Plans are distilled to how much income do you want in retirement? So as, they, as soon as they see the opportunity to do this, then that's, you know, they say, that's what I've always wanted to do. That's what planning should be about. Let, you know, let me make some changes. Let me see the impact on the long term. So, you know, the, the anecdotal evidence that this actually works is, the feedback I get from our clients based on the feedback from they get from their clients where they've actually given them the opportunity. So that's all I ever encourage uh, anyone to do with this website is not whether clients will use it or not, but at least expose them to it to see what they have to say about it. Anybody else with um, any questions? If not, thank you for your time and I hope you have a great weekend.